guys, welcome back to my beginner's series, and if you have no fucking clue what's going on, welcome to my channel, I'm Jacob. Basically, in today's video, in part three of my series, I'm going to be talking to you guys about primer, foundation, concealer, and powder. It might be a lengthy video, so go and grab your cup of tea, your glass of wine, your coffee, have a drink, let's sit down, and let's have a chat. In my last two videos, I've talked about my kind of beginner starter makeup kit, as well as the brushes that I would recommend. So let's just jump straight into it. I'm gonna talk about skincare and primer first. Now, no, I have combination skin. I have like a, like my nose gets quite oily and excuse the no makeup look, I know I look like shit. And my nose does get quite oily. My forehead, a little bit, but mainly my cheeks and my chin are fine. They're like normal to dry. Now, I don't moisturize under my makeup application. The reason for that is because my face gets oily. If I put a moisturizer down, a primer, foundation, concealer, etc., etc., and then my skin produces oil, it's gonna make the product slide a lot more. So, if you have a more drier skin type, like a normal to drier skin type, make sure you load up on your moisturizer, your skincare, let it settle in for about maybe by five, five, 10 minutes at least, and then go in with your primer and start. Now, primer also depends on your skin type. So silicone-based primers, um, let me get an example. So silicone-based primers like the Clara Zero Pores Primer are great for someone who has more of a combination skin like myself because what they do is people who have like a combo to oily skin type have like large pores most of the time anyway. I have fucking hella large pores. So I want that shit to be gone. So this just kind of helps to smoothen the skin's texture a little bit. If you have like fine lines or wrinkles, this is also going to be great to kind of just fill fill that in and not having to worry about like them showing. And any other primer is going to feel like more of like a moisturizer. So something like your MAC Natural Radiance, it's just like a cream, pop it on and it just holds everything on longer. That one there I spoke about in my first video. And it's great for, I want to say... I want to say that one's great for all skin types, and I go into more detail about that in my first video, so I'll link that down below. So you could either go for something like that, or something that has a bit more of like a, um, bit more of like a dewy kind of finish to it, especially if you have more of a drier skin. So, something like the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone, or whatever shade you're matched to. It makes your skin look super glowy, because it has shimmer in it. If you want something more drugstore, the um, L'Oreal Lumi does it. It's in like a smaller little white bottle and you kind of just pump it out and it gives your skin the exact same appearance. It's kind of like your Max Drug Cream. And last but not least, for primer, you don't need to use a brush, you don't need to use a beauty blender, it doesn't really matter. If you're like me, and you have quite combination skin and you want a dewy finish, I actually layer primers, so I'll use my Clara primer as well as my Becca one. And I'll just um, use a Clara one first, pop it all over my skin, and then the Becca one on top because I want the shimmer to be the last layer that's on my skin. So in saying that, I'm going to be using the Clara Zero Pores Primer for today. I like to do two pumps of this. It go, A little bit goes a really long way, guys. Just going to pop that everywhere, basically. And essentially, a primer is just going to hold everything on for a lot longer. It's going to make things last a lot longer and stop things from creasing and moving and smudging and yeah. Primer is done. So, onto foundation. Now, foundations usually come with an SPF, regardless of what formula it is. It's either SPF 15, SPF 10, 9, 30, 50, like whatever. Um, SPF is basically just sunscreen, so it's kind of like a two-in-one kind of thing. Now, if you're picking a foundation for when you go out for flash photography, Make sure you pick a foundation that has little to no SPF in it because sunscreen will reflect back at the camera and that's what gives you the white look to your face. Like, have you ever gotten photos back and you're just like, what the fuck is my face white? Mm hmm, that's why. If you want something that's gonna be for every day, then make sure you go for something that has an SPF in it, like either 15, 20, 30, whatever. Now, when I was working at MAC, I always used to ask people these three questions when looking for foundations How much coverage are you after? What's your skin type? And what finish are you after? So, let me just kind of break it down. Yeah. So, for coverage, there's light coverage, which means that you're gonna still see your skin underneath it. It's just gonna kind of even out the tone a little bit more. Medium coverage is gonna conceal anything you want it to, but you may need to layer the product and full coverage is going to completely cover and conceal your face. So for finish, there are about four finishes that foundations usually set to. So there's matte, there's natural, satin and dewy or glowy. The light coverage foundations will always come in either a satin or a dewy finish. It's very, very hard to find a light coverage foundation that sets matte. Usually with a lighter coverage foundation, they are a lot more emollient. Medium coverage comes in pretty much every single, um, 
finish and full coverage usually comes in matte, satin or dewy so it's kind of one extreme or the other. Now I'm going to have listed down below as well some foundations in each category and what finish they have as well so that way you guys can kind of get an idea if you want to go more high end or more drugstore it's up to you but everything is down below. And also just like a quick tip um, with deciding what colour you, like, you want to get. Have a look at the veins on your wrist. If you have more blue tone, you most likely have more of a pink undertone to your skin. If you have more green veins, then your skin does have more of a yellow undertone. You can't tell what veins, like what colored veins you have, then you are most likely a golden undertone, which is what I am. If you are going to buy a foundation, when you go out, or even for every day, then you want to get one for when you're fake tanned. To go into a store and get them to color match you when you're not fake tanned is a complete waste of time. And the reason why is because fake tan can alter the undertone of your skin and foundation colors can become lighter or darker on different people. So it's really important that you fake tan first and then going and getting your fake tan matched. Yeah. I'm going to go in with my Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation. This one here is... I want to say a light to medium coverage, more of a me. It's a, I'd say it's a good medium. And the finish of it is quite natural to satin. So I'm going to use my beauty blender. Now, if you want some insight on what products and what brushes and stuff to get, I have that video listed down below as well that I just put out last week. And then you guys can go and have a look. Obviously, d it depends on how much coverage you want from your foundation as well. I like a foundation that I can build. So I usually go for medium coverage foundations because you have the option of layering it to make it full coverage or shearing it out with like a damp sponge to make it a little bit lighter coverage. And don't forget the neck, guys. We don't want lines, please. Yeah. Let's move on to, sorry, if you see me looking down, I'm reading off notes, my bad. Now let's move on to concealer. So basically concealers are based on texture. So they're a cream and then they're a liquid. Liquid concealers are best used under the eye and cream is best used on the Skin. Now, go with your same skin tone. I see a lot of people going like darker or lighter. Now, if you want to go lighter under your eyes, perfect. That's going to highlight beautifully, but do not use that same concealer on the rest of your face because if you put a lighter shade under your eyes and then you go ahead and use that to cover a pimple, you're going to be highlighting that pimple. You're not concealing it. So make sure you go for a concealer shade that is the same shade as your skin unless you're highlighting with it. And on that note, I'm going to have some concealers like down below as well for you guys. So let's pop some concealer on. I'm going to use something that's going to highlight underneath my eyes and I'm going to go into highlighting and contouring in my next video. I'm going to be mixing MAC Moisture Cover in NW20. Now this has more of a pink undertone, so it's actually going to help to counteract any darkness under my eyes. And if you want me to do a separate video on my color correcting and how that all works, let me know down below. And then to highlight under my eyes, I'm going to be using my my, my Rimmel Wake Me Up concealer. So I'm going to pop just like a little bit of this on. That was a lot. Okay. I've got to even it out. And then I'm going to use the tip of my Beauty Blender and just pat that in. Now, we're going to be creating like more of like a daytime appropriate look, by the way, with these tutorials because then I'm going to go into like a day to night transitional kind of makeup. And then let's go into the room and wake me up to highlight. Now the reason I'm using like the butt side of my beauty blender is because it's going to have some of my foundation left on it, so it's going to help to blend in the concealer just that little bit, a little bit better. Now onto powder. So there are a few different kinds of powders there, I'm just going to read from here. So there are coloured pressed powders, just like normal pressed powders, block powders, translucent powders, loose powders, and powder foundations. So Colored pressed powders basically just lock in your foundation. They give a little bit of coverage, they mattify the skin, lock everything in for the day, don't have to worry about it, and they're great for touch-ups throughout the day as well. Block powders are colored powders, yet translucent. So they go on the skin completely translucent, but they have a color like, like in the pan. And they're basically just made to take away any shine without adding coverage. So this is great for someone who has more of an oilier skin type and wants to touch up throughout the day and doesn't want to keep on adding on heaps of coverage. Translucent powder. Now this comes in like a pressed powder version or like a loose version where it's just like a loose powder in like a big kind of tub and you got to be careful that the shit doesn't go everywhere. 
So they don't give any coverage or have any color to them. They're made just for like mattifying the skin and setting the um, face, setting the makeup. Now, translucent powders are usually used for baking as well, which I'm going to go into more depth in in another video, another beginner series video. However, some translucent powders can flash back in photography. So what that means is you're going to have to like really be careful what powder, like what translucent powder you go for. So just before you, if you think of buying one, just look it up on Google, Google like flashback tests. So for example, like Krylon translucent powder flashback test, just look that up and then you'll have a lot of people who have put it to the test themselves. So it saves you having to go and spend the coin, you're disappointed, you get it. Loose powders come in translucent and regular. So if it's a translucent powder, it's going to give you no coverage. If it's a regular powder and it has like a skin tone through it, then you can get medium to full coverage with it. And they are usually used as foundation as well. Powder foundations, these are usually like medium, medium to fuller coverage and a matte finish. Um, obviously, you're not going to get as much coverage with a powder than you would with a liquid foundation. But um, they're a great one to go for if you have like good skin and you just want something that's just going to kind of give you a little bit of something and yeah. That kind of thing. An example of this is like your Australis Fresh and Flawless or your MAC Studio Fix. Now with powders, they all come in matte. There are some, like your MAC Mineralized Skin Finish for example, those kinds of powders have a sheen, they give a sheen to the skin without glitter or shimmer. Otherwise, any other kind of powder is going to mattify the skin completely. So now for powder, I'm going to use my Kryolan Translucent Loose Powder. This is in the shade TL2. So it's translucent and it's loose, which means that it's like a runny, it's a runny powder, fucking hell, Jacob. Which means that it doesn't, like as you can see, like it, it pours out and the shit goes everywhere, so be careful. Now the reason why I love this is because you get so much product in here, guys. You get 60 grams of product. 60, this is $40. That is such an amazing amount of product for that price and it doesn't flash back in photography. I'm actually going to use my beauty blender to set my face as well. So, I'm going to take the top, like the tip of the beauty blender into that powder. Use that to set underneath the eyes. And just keep on pressing over it until it's blended into your skin. So what this does is it makes it literally bulletproof. You will not crease. You will not like have any, anything rubbing away throughout the day. Doing this is going to make everything go on so much better. I'm even going to set my smile lines. So I was crazy up and my forehead as well. Alrighty guys, so we are done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll reply to you. Even check the description to see if your questions have already been answered. And I'll have a lot of products listed down below as well. So in my next tutorial, I'm going to be going over contouring, highlighting, blush, bronzer and highlighter. If you did enjoy this video, please rate it a massive thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to follow me on my Twitter and Instagram, that is, and that's Jacob, and my Snapchat is right here for you guys. And if you haven't noticed, yes, this background is going to be the background for my beginner series, so whatever you see this background, it's going to be like, okay, alright, we're, we're, we're getting a tutorial today, honey. So, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Okay, let's just see what this is about. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and as you can see, I'm joined by Alana once again. Hello.